Hello everybody, Steven here with Cardboard Coalition, and today I figured I'd bring you guys a uh, playthrough of After the Empire. This is from Gray Fox Games. It says it takes 90 minutes for ages 14 plus, and it's uh, for one to two players. So we have a two player setup here, so let's go ahead and run through the setup. First off, they tell you to set up your player boards. So we got our two players set up right here. The first thing that we want to do is you have a player pick their color or I mean they could pick what kind of environment they like. Most of the green ones look fairly similar to the board and then you have this one north one that looks a little different. So the players go ahead and each player takes a player board. Um, then they go ahead and take a starting barracks card and how you can tell it's the starting barracks. They have these yellow backs. You see the building symbol and there's the little blue in the corners that lets you know that's the starting barracks card. Um, they take one reference card and they take all of their workers. So here's all their workers. They get five workers, right? A disc, this is their player order disc marker. This is their gold marker. Now I will say that this is the deluxe version as you can tell and I'll talk about with some of this stuff but you have a special cutout for the gold, right? Um, you have little, little men instead of cubes, but they are color coded for some of the workers. You have a like molded different cubes for the different resources and stuff like that. But this is del the deluxe. All right, so back to it, right? We got our workers. So you place three of the workers in your great hall, right? And then you go ahead and you shuffle up the secret objectives and you give each person a secret objective. These are your secret objectives. You give these a shuffle, give each person a secret objective. All right, once that is done, then you go ahead and you, well, the secret objectives keep face down, they're secret. Felt like that was self-explanatory. Then you go ahead and you give each person a wooden gate. Now I have the gates and everything off to the side here, just because this takes up a lot of space. And we have stone, we have wooden stone, right? They're all over here. And the turrets, there's wood turrets and stone turrets. I have them kind of all sitting over here out of view. So you give each person a wooden gate and they decide where they want to place it. So in this example that I've set up here, our, um, Player, purple player decided to put the gate facing um, to, I guess in this sense it would be the south. You have a little, um, why can't I think of it right now? You have a little thing telling you north, uh, south, east, west, never eat shredded wheat. Um, so they go ahead and decide to put theirs south. Uh, the red player went ahead and put theirs right here and put theirs east. The gates for all intents and purposes, even for the stone, are the same as walls. The difference is they have um, one less. So see the wooden gate has one, these wooden walls have two. All right, so once you place the gate, you go ahead and you put a little wood cube in the gate. So you go ahead and put it in there. All right, once the gate's placed, then you place your three walls. In this case, it's these three. In this case, it was those three. Place your three walls and you fill them with little your little wooden cubes. Then you go and take two soldiers and put them in the middle of your castle. Like I said, these are the deluxe, so you have these really small soldiers, but they're color-coded. You might have red cubes, so you go ahead and take two soldiers, put them in the middle of your castle. And then you go ahead and you grab the farm tokens for your board. I don't know if it completely matters, but you can tell if you flip them to the back, you have the little color in the corner, so that's obviously purple. The snow ones are easy to tell because they're white compared to all the green ones. But you go ahead and give each person their four farms. They put them in the farm space. It might be a little hard to tell from up there, but it's a shaded area. And you just remember there's one on each side of the um, castle. It's hard to call it a castle right now because it's more of a fort. All right, so you go ahead and put them down and you put them level one side up. That is your level two side. So you put them all level side one up. All right, after that, you go ahead and give each player four um, food, which are these yellow cubes. You give them, th and those go into your granary. 
Um, and then into your stockpile, you go ahead and put three wood, two stone, and one iron. Once that's done, then we get to move over to the uh, main board and setting it up. So first, of course, you put the board out. And then after that, it says to lay out the five refugee cards. These are the refugee cards right here. So there's five of them. You can tell because it has the refugee symbol right there. As you can see, refugee symbol. Refugees, right? They're a yellow back, and they also have these green um, little circles, which lets you know, because you see these cards don't have them, it lets you know um, that these are the uh, starter cards. Well, I think the yellow lets you know in the picture, because green just matches that now that I'm looking at it, right? So what you're supposed to do is, if this is your first game, you just shuffle them really quick, and you hand one to each player. If you've played this before, it's not everybody's first game, what they tell you to do is pick the player who has last been to a castle, you give them the five cards, they flip through them, and they choose one of these five cards. Now, what these refugees do is they give you certain abilities, right? So players might want to use those abilities. Starting cards never have any points, and I'll probably talk about that later. All right, so let's just go ahead and say this is the first game ever played. So we're just going to take two of them and randomly put them out. So this person is getting the ranger. I go ahead and put them down here, make sure it's still in shot. And this person is, oops, going to get, oh, that's interesting. They're going to get the foreman, just in the numbers, how it's set up. They get the foreman. You take the rest of these cards, they go to the box, they're not needed. Any extra cards. There's five, and you can only play with four players. So there you go. All right. So once that is done, you go ahead and you find the first player, and you base it on these numbers in the starting refugee. So you see they have a two. This player has a one, right? The lowest number goes first on the track and the player order. Then you go ahead and put the next. So if you had maybe three players, the next player had um, a, or let's say even this player had a three or a four, they would still be the second player, right? And so that's how you set up your initial um, player order. So let's let you know how players go through. All right, once that's done, then you go ahead and start handing out gold, right? And this is how it works. First player gets five gold. This is our gold track down here. So first player gets five gold. Remember, like I said, um, I believe it's just a bigger disc in the basic game, but it's all color coded, coordinated, co coordinated, color coordinated. Second player gets six gold. All right, so now you have the gold trackers placed for each player. After that, you go ahead and take the catapult and you set it down on the zero place. The, the threat track is right here. If you see these little catapults, you put it at the zero, the first one. All right, so once that's done, you go ahead and you take each player has some extra workers and you place those workers. This is the season track. You go ahead and place a worker at the three and at the six for each player that's in the game. So put them at the three and then at the six. All right, then you also go ahead and you make sure that you put down the season tracker which I believe it's just a yellow circle in the basic, this is a deluxe, right, at the one spot. You also want to make sure that you put down your flag tokens. So one thing I'm going to say, it kind of confused me the first time through this, is there's multiple one flag tokens, but we'll talk about that later. You put one flag token in each spot, and as you can see underneath, it tells you what flag token to put in each spot. All right, once you have that all done, then you're ready to go ahead and get the cards uh, shuffled and put out. So what you wanna do is the secret objectives, which we've obviously shuffled already, so they probably should already be shuffled now. So secret objectives, then you go ahead and do the refugee cards, you shuffle them and put them out, and then go ahead and put the invader cards out, right? And this is where I'm gonna say, this is for the siege cards too. These cards, when you shuffle them, there are different orientations. This tells you where the invaders are gonna come from, right? And you never want to um, change the orientation of the cards. So what I do when I shuffle them is I go like this, 
I mean, you could put them on the table, but I also give them a little just light spin in my hand, then straighten them back out, and then give them a shuffle or two, just for you guys to know. So there you go. You go ahead and put the invader cards out. Once you have the invader cards out, you go ahead and put the building cards out, give it a shuffle, put the deck there face down. Obviously, all these are face down. Your decks go face down. Then you go ahead and put the siege deck out. Same thing, they have orientation just like the invader cards. So you might want to do the spinny thing and then the shuffle, shuffle, spinny, spinny, shuffle, shuffle. All right, so <laughs> once that's done, then you go ahead and you go to the refugee deck and you put two refugee cards out face up, right? And they have spaces right here to show you that you put two out face up. So you go ahead and do that. All right, after you do that, you do the same thing with the building deck, but you have three cards, you put them face up. And then you go ahead and you go over to the invader deck. You put the first one face up in the leftmost slot. You put it face up like that. So you kind of get a warning of what's coming. You can start setting up for what's coming. All right. After that, you go ahead and take one siege card and you set it right here in the face down position. This is the siege card for the first season when the invaders come and attack. Right After that, you go ahead and you put the supplies out. Once again, deluxe edition. There's some extra things in here because I just have the trays like we have obviously the blue workers in with the gray you know, city workers, extra flags and stuff like that. But these are game tray inserts there for the deluxe edition. It makes it really easy to put everything out. So what do we have out here? We have our food, we have our soldiers, we have our mercenaries, and remember these are all still color-coded if you have cubes. We have our wood, we have our stone, um, then we, whoops, sorry, we have our wood, we have our stone, we have our iron, that's iron over there, the darker gray's iron. Um, we got the protectors, we have the invaders, um, we have, oh, sorry, these are the invader tokens, right? We have um, wound and damage tokens. So your wound and damage tokens on here, fire is damage. Uh, the sword with blood is wound. That has to do damage with your buildings, or sorry, yeah, damage with your buildings, wounds with your refugees. All right. Um, then you have some extra things kind of sitting there. You want to make sure they're available to everybody. These are the fire, right, for the fields when they catch on fire. Um, I don't know if this is for the deluxe, the little stands. They don't always fit in there really well. They fall out a lot. All right, you have your move tokens. These are your move tokens, as I said. These are your defend tokens, as I said. You get to put these on farms, so on and so forth. We'll talk about that as we go through. Once you have that all ready, you're ready to go, and you know your player order based on this right here. So there is two, I mean, there's multiple uh, phases, right? There's multiple phases, let's see if we can go with the card. So you have round structure and you have multiple phases. The main two that you have on here is action and combat, right? This, all this stuff is what happens after combat, right? So let's go through and talk about this really quick. The idea of the game is that it's after the empire and now it's fiefdoms, right? You have these small just areas that protect their own. And what you're doing is you're trying to um, push the, the invaders off and make your um, castle, your fiefdom, the most prosperous. You do that by having the most gold by the end of the game, right? And gold obviously tracked by down here. Now, how do you go about doing that? Well, you need to build up your castle I might call these forts sometimes, just forgive me, because they look like forts, but you build up your castle. I know once you get the stone, start getting stone in there, obviously it looks like a castle. But, all right. So, the first phase is your action phase, right? And in your action phase, what you do is you place workers in different spots. You have spots on the board here, and you have spots on your player board, and you could potentially have spots in your building area and refugees, I think, Think, but I could be wrong off the top of my head. I think, but it could be wrong. Some cards have areas where you can put things down. Those areas are designated by that gold circle and the gray inside. 
Now, the game shows you how many people can go to different areas. So, for example, down here, you can have two workers. That's it. Right? Over here, you can have one worker in a two-player game. In a three-plus, you can have two workers, so three to four. Then you have ones like the taxes right here. One worker, three workers, four workers. This is if you have four players. This is if you're three-plus players. Right? Same here. So just keep that in mind. This dictates how many people can go there. Same over here. It gets a little tricky. You have two spots. Um, three plus, you have three spots. And then when you have four, you have four spots. But the spots do certain things on both sides. We'll get into that right now. All right. So the action spaces. So these are places to go to to do things. So we have taxes right here. And it tells you right underneath. You can either have four gold and one mercenary or five food. I might call that grain because I call it grain a lot, but five food. All right, then you have the mercenary camp. And this is where I was talking about see this divide. It's going to depend on which side you put your worker. So if you put your worker here, you can do five gold for three soldiers. And the color will help you remember this, red and then blue. Red are soldiers, blue are mercenaries. The difference between the two is soldiers get wounded um, and they go into your infirmary. Mercenaries get killed when they take a wound um, and at the end of the season they disappear. Your, your soldiers will stay there all the time. So five for three soldiers, three for five mercenary, or you come over here four for two soldiers, two for three mercenary. All right, the next thing that you have is your traveling merchant up here. Now, you can buy and sell up here, and it shows you what you got here. So, one person can go here, obviously in a two-player, three-player, two can go, and a four-player, three people can go. And how this works is four gold, you get one iron and six wood. Three gold, you get um, two stone and three food. This is if you're buying, if you're selling, one iron gives you four gold and three food. Uh, two... Uh, food gives you three gold and two iron. So this is your like trading system right here is buy and sell. All right, what other action spot space do we have? I'm gonna call them spots too. We have scout. So scout over here, how this works is you put a worker down and it tells you right here what you do. You look at the top two cards of the deck. These are your secret objectives so you can get more objectives. You choose one to keep and the other one goes face up because it's discarded at the bottom of your deck. All right, then you also get one defend token when you're scouting. How defend tokens work is you take the defend token and you put it on one of your farm areas and it keeps it from being raised and we'll talk about that later. All right, then you also get three move tokens. Now move token allows you to move a soldier and it allows you to do that uh, up to three soldiers. It depends on how many tokens you have. If you get a move token, you can kind of just set it over to the side and use it at the appropriate time. All right, next up. Well, we can kind of go through these three down here because they're all really similar. You have the quarry, you have the mine, and you have the wood. Quarry gives you stone, my, three stone. Mine gives you two iron. And the wood mill, sorry, the wood mill gives you th um, five wood. Now we have building cards. So you can come over to the building cards and you go ahead and put a worker and you pay the price of the card that you want. In this case, we have four wood and one um, iron gives us the orchard, which gives us a space that we can put a worker down and get four food um, and there's no slash. So you get four food and four wood whenever you put a worker right here. It's actually a pretty good building. I like that building. All right, so you have to be able to pay the amount. Put a worker, pay the amount. Right, and that is the same thing with the refugee. Put a worker, pay the amount. Now with these refugees, we have things like this. We have two food and two gold. Looks like a lot of these are food, food and gold. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, one of the reasons to buy refugees and to buy buildings is because this is gold points at the end. And remember, whoever has the most gold at the end wins the game, right? The buildings also have gold points. And sometimes they can have a uh, zero, All right? Let's see. I think this one, yeah. So this one has zero. 
Now, there are some things to think about with these cards that will help you know. So let's go through some of these symbols really quick since we're on these cards. So right here, this means once per season, you turn the card to the side and you do whatever's over there. You have that colon. So you exhaust the card or tap the card and you do whatever's on the other side. In this case, it is so three. So three, instead of doing here, means that you can take a fire off of one of your farms. Now you have cards that are like this one that tell you in a certain place, it gives you something extra. So in the quarry, quarry, the quarry, in the quarry, you would get four instead of three. So plus one um, stone. In the mine, you would get three iron instead of two because it says plus one iron. Now you also have cards over here. You see there is the um, tap once per season. Right here, all you do is put a worker there to get that. And I don't think I set it up like I wanted to, but there is, oh, there we go. I got it really quick. There is symbols like this. Now, what this one means is as soon as this go that down arrow, as soon as this goes into your area as a refugee, you get to do that right away. So you can sow four. That allows you to um, put four, uh, um, God, I'm just blanking right now. So you can sow and take the fire off of one of your farms. It takes three to take the fire off one of the farms. All right. So there's another one. See, when you scout, you get to draw one more card, so on and so forth. All right. So what do we have now is we have tricky things that we can do on our board. All right. So these are the things we can do on our board. We have our granary. This allows us to sow three, right? So you sow. What sow does is um, it allows you to raise a farm, right? So it takes a um, the sow ability to get rid of fire. Like I said, there is fire. There's fire right there. Now, what this means is you can, if you put a worker here, you can sow up to three fields. So three fields, you can either take the fire off. See, I told you these fall apart really quick. Or you can upgrade to level two. If it's a level one, you can go to level two. If it has fire, you take the fire off if it was raised. And then you also get to put a protect out on one, one protect. You can sow three fields. So if you had three fields with fire, one worker here would get rid of those three fields. They would sow them and it would put one defense on that farm. All right. And like I said, this means when um, invaders come in, they can't uh, raise that farm. All right. The other thing that we have here is we have the... Um, Infirmary, and I'm trying to follow the order of the book and it's kind of bouncing around. We have the infirmary here. You put a worker down and it allows you to heal your injured soldiers. Remember, soldiers, mercenaries, invaders all take one damage. But with the soldier, what happens is you would take them off the wall or from the middle, wherever they got damage from, and you would put them right here. Once you put a worker there, you can heal up to four soldiers and bring them back to the middle of the castle. All right. And then we have one last thing here is we have the stockpile and the stockpile is where we have all of our extra stuff. So you can put a worker here and you can spend as much stuff as you have. You can build walls, build turrets, um, fix buildings that have been damaged because of an attack. Because of an attack, you can heal, right? People over here. You can do all that fun and crazy, crazy stuff. All right, and as much as you have supplies to do. So if I had enough supplies to build four turrets here, when I put a work here, I can build the four turrets. If I had enough supplies for four turrets and to fix a building, I can do that. As long as I have the supplies with my worker there, I can do that action. All right, so, and how this works is to, well, let's, let's go off here because this is a good, way to look at it. We have this guide to tell us how to do things. So it tells us here to wound someone or to fix someone who's wounded, right? It is uh, two food, 
to um, fix a damaged building. It is one iron. And then this is for a stone turret, and we'll talk about that in a minute. For a stone turret, it takes two stone, right, to get rid of fire on a stone turret. Right now, we have no turrets out. All right, so this is how it goes. If you are building a wooden wall, because you have to replace one of your walls, it costs three wood. Once you put that wall in, you go ahead and you fill it with the two spaces too. So you wouldn't put an empty wall. You'd put the wall and then fill in the little cubes. For a turret, it costs four wood. Over here, for a stone wall, right, if you're building it for the first time, right, it costs four, if you're upgrading, not building for the first time, if you're upgrading. So I have this wall here and I wanna upgrade it. I pay the four stone and I get to change that out and put a fancy stone one in, which obviously holds more pieces. All right, same with the turret. So I would pay, if I was upgrade, say I had a turret there, I would pay four stone, one iron to upgrade from a wood turret, right? One of these bad boys, I want to upgrade it, over to one of these bad boys. That's upgrading. I would keep the wood from this one, go into my supply, and this would be filled with two um, stone cubes. Now, if I'm not upgrading, I'm just straight building. If this wall had been taken out and I was putting a new wall in, I'd have to pay the two wood. If there was no turret there and I just wanna build a stone one right off the bat, I have to pay three wood, right? And just remember that you have the card here and any wood that's there, it goes into your um, pile of things, your stockpile for later. Now, if something gets damaged in a fight though, that wooden stone gets taken off the board. All right, so now it's time to go into the combat phase. This is the second big phase of this. Now the combat phase has some steps that you go through. So the first thing you do is you place your soldiers and your mercenaries. So you get to decide which wall you wanna place them on. Of course, now they don't wanna sit. You could place them anywhere. You could place as many as you want on each area. I've noticed these little walkways in the back are just wide enough to fit the soldiers. You go ahead and place all your people. Once you have all your soldiers and mercenaries placed where you want them, and you can have them in the middle, this is a, a move phase, kind of a free move phase. So you place your soldiers. After that's done, you reveal um, the invader cards. So right now, if we're in the first season, we have no secret cards. Later on, based on the seasons, we'll have some face down cards depending on what season we're in. And remember, always keep the orientation of the card. So, we go ahead and look at this card and we put invaders out. How we put invaders out is based on our gold level. So we'll just go with the example that we have here. We have, um, if you have this much or um, below, you go in here. So 18, you have to have 18 to get seven. You have to have 34 to get 11, right? And they also on here show you these little fire markers and it tells you that the threat could possibly be much higher once you hit past these points. It's kind of letting you know, and the, the swords are letting you know right there, like, watch out. All right, so anyways, so in this case, um, both of our players were at six, five and six gold um, on the gold track, and that means they only get three invaders, and they get their invaders based on which side of the card that it's showing, and you can look at the compass, that's the word I couldn't think of earlier. Look at the compass, so east side of the building. Now, here is the thing. When you're looking at your board, you have north, south, east, west. There, your opponents is going to be different. So in here, it's telling us on our west end, our, sorry, on our east border, we're gonna have some um, invaders. So your basic invaders, your swords are these guys. You go ahead and set them down. Bloop. Bloop. Now for this person, I think they should have a compass on here too to show you. But for this person, this is north. This is the top of their board, north, south, east, west. They're going to have two invaders over here. So you can see how it depends on where you're sitting and who you're going, or I mean, where you're sitting and what the card says. All right, so 
Once that's done, we've gotten our invaders out. Then we go ahead and flip the siege card, right? Keeping the orientation, we flip it over. So we have the siege card and they're sieging from the same side. And this is a tribuge. These tokens tell you where the siege is coming from so you can remember. And you have ladders. This is for towers and um, ladders. And then the tribuche is for all the machines. And I can't think of the catapult, the tribuche, and the mon monigal, monigal, I forget what it's called. All right, so you go ahead and put that down. And once again, it's east. So we go ahead and set that down east. The next thing that we look at on this card is down here and it goes on our gold levels once again. So this is, if anybody is at eight, they take uh, two damage and that um, pitcher means your turret. So they would take two damage to their turret. Everybody would take two damage to their turret. So right here we have the leader, no turrets. Right, and then you have over there, no turrets, they're both below eight. Now, one of the things that I will say is if this track has gone to here, everybody is considered to be at nine gold. And this will constantly keep going up. Even if you're below it, you're considered to be at whatever this trebuchet, this uh, danger marker, I think it's the danger marker, wherever it's at, right? So three, this is zero, three, right? This one puts us at uh, G6, right? 9, 12, so on and so forth. So right now we're just looking at gold because the tribuche is over there. Now the leader, and I messed this up really bad. So the leader gets um, invaders equal to what season is. We're in season one. Um, purple is our leader and you check your leaders by your gold levels. So that means that, get this guy out they go ahead and set a person down there, right? Because they're at season one, um, invaders equal season number. All right, and then you are ready to go. Now, like I said, with these cards, you have, I probably shouldn't mix them all up. All right, there's ladders. So if you were to have a ladder, you go ahead and flip it like this, right? Now, what a ladder does or a siege engine, that means people in that area get to move inside of the castle without knocking the wall down. They get to move inside the castle. That's what the ladder and, um, well, they just have a siege tower. That's what those do. But in this point, it's a catapult, so they don't get an easy way in. They have to try to attack the walls. All right, so here we go. We've gotten all the cards out. We've gotten all the, we flipped the cards, put the people out. Now, invaders raise the farms that they're in. So, of course I have none that I can, oh, there's one I can grab really easy. That farm gets raised. And this farm over here would get um, raised because the invaders are there. The only way to prevent this is if this farm had a shield token, instead of being raised because the invaders are there, the shield token gets taken away, right? It was protected. Or you can leave it out to the end of the season, it doesn't really matter, right? So let's say that they have protection down there. All right, so that is done. All right, and so it's at this point, you can move your troops depending on how many tokens you have. Now, remember I told you there's these move tokens that you can get. That's a one, that's a three, All right? So let's say, I forgot to set them up. Let's set them up for attack, attack. Let's go like this for the example later, we'll explain. All right, they go out there for attack. So here are move tokens. If this player over here, let's say they had one move token, they can spend this token at this point they can say, okay, I'm spending this token and I'm moving. You can move from anywhere, down here, from up here to down here, from down here to up here, from here to here, anywhere. So they're gonna move this soldier over here because they spent one move token, all right? So they can move one soldier. All right, now we are ready to rumble. All right, and so how this works out 
is like I said, remember it's a one for one. And just so we can do, um, well, I'll wait on that. So it's a one for one. So this is how uh, this works out. So when you go into the actual combat phase, you have some steps. You have your archery step, your movement step, your melee step, and then you return to the archery step if need be, if there's still invaders on the field. Now, so how this works is during the archery step, you look at any troop on the wall and all this damage is done simultaneously. It's not like the troops get rid of the invaders so the invaders don't attack. This all happens simultaneously, but this is how it works out. Troops on the wall deal one damage to invader. So, and you do one wall at a time. So right now, we have two troops on the wall that would kill two invaders, right? Because we have two invaders. Two troops gets rid of two invaders, right? Um, the wood turrets, so if you have a wood turret, even if it doesn't have a cube in there, it has a cube or not, if you have a wood turret, it does one damage to any invader. It could be archers too in both adjacent fields. So soldiers adjacent field. This soldier can attack over here, just the adjacent field. The turrets can hit this field and this field and they get to do both of those. So they get to hit once here and once there. And remember you just do it around your board. You do each wall at a time. All right, if you have a stone turret, these are fancy schmancy ones right here. If you have a stone turret, you can do two damage to both adjacent fields to any adjacent field. And like I said, just do one wall at a time and do your damage. All right, so there's that. Now, um, if there are archery invaders, which we didn't get any on this card, let's see if I can get a card to show you guys the archery invaders. All I had to do is flip one over. There's the archery, there's your regular invader, that's your archery. Archers, archery. So. What archers do, so let's for argument say that there is an archer out here too. What archers are gonna do is they're going to take out one of the soldiers on the wall. So in this case, when you went through the battle, you would have two of the, at least two of these guys would be taken out by the soldier. There's no turret, so we don't get to take that person out. This archer is gonna take out one of the soldiers, right? And even if you said, okay, my two soldiers are up here. One soldier is going to get rid of the archer and one's going to get rid of one of these guys. It, it, um, the archer still takes care of one of these guys because everything's simultaneous. Now, the other thing that goes on is damage happens to your um, wall, right? So first, let's get past the archery section. Once archery is done, then you're allowed to do movement. And how movement works is um, if there are invaders outside and a wall's missing, all right, let's say this wall's missing. I knew they were gonna fall over. The invaders would move inside of the um, city, inside of your castle, right? If the wall is still intact, and what it means is that it's just still standing there. So a wall can still be there if there's a cube. Each hit the wall takes, you take one cube away, and then if there's no cubes and the wall takes a hit, the wall disappears. All right, so the invaders would move in. These invaders can't move in. So at this point, you get a free move action with your troops. You can decide to move your troops around, right? So these troops have done everything that they can, so we're going to go ahead and drop them inside the castle because What's gonna happen next is scary. All right, so they go ahead and move inside the castle. I know we're not dealing with this one up here. These guys would have killed these guys. They would have taken two damage on this wall um, over here if they could, but it doesn't happen. All right, so they move inside, right? The next step is your melee step. Each invader inside the castle deals one outside the castle. So each invader outside the castle deals one damage to the wall, right? So let's say, for this argument, let's say there's at least two. They do one damage to the wall for one guy and another damage. Now your wall has been torn down, 
because they do two damage, right? If the invaders are inside of the castle, right? So outside they attack the wall, inside they don't attack turrets. That is always your siege engines that attack turrets. There can still be a turret there and the wall can still fall. All right, so if the um, invaders are inside the castle, it goes back to the same thing. Troops deal one damage to invaders, invaders deal one damage to troops. So this would just nil this out, All right? Remember your troops go to your infirmary, invaders go back to the supply. All right, if there are soldiers, say there was a soldier that was on this wall over here, they don't count for this battle in here and that would still leave one invader in here, which is bad, right? And we'll go back to that um, here in a second. All right, so if at the end of this, there are no invaders inside the city, you can have all your soldiers hurt. It doesn't matter as long as there's no invaders inside the city, you have survived the um, invasion. Now, if there are no invaders in the city, inside the city, inside the castle, they can be on the wall, like I said, but um, no, not no invaders, no soldiers inside the castle, but an invader, then what you end up doing is you have to take two damage, right? So, remember, you've been sacked now. The wall's been knocked down, the invader got inside. So this means you've been sacked. If there's no... Um, mercenaries or soldiers inside and there's an invader. So what you do at this point is you have to take two damage. This can be two damage to buildings. These, and it means these buildings, it could be two damage wounds to refugees, right? So you go ahead and deal that out, right? So in the starting scenario, buildings and refugees cannot take damage. Now let's say someone had maybe this card out like this. Let's say they have this card here too. Now this person can take damage. And what you do is you take that damage token and you put it over your point marker. Now this card can still be used for its special abilities, but at the end of the game, if this isn't taken care of, you get no points for that refugee. So you block your points. And then your starting stuff obviously can't take the damage because there's no reason to block those points. And we've talked about how to get rid of um, damage and wounds. All right, so once that's done, you go ahead and you move back to the beginning. If there are still invaders out somewhere, you go through the whole thing until all the invaders have been dealt with. So once that is done, we go into the next phase, which is your flag phase. And what you look at is you look at your buildings. So let's say we're, we're all done. We've cleared the invaders. We've taken our licks where we needed to take our licks, right? And we're ready to go on to the flag phase. And these would come off the board because siege engines aren't out there anymore. All right, he's still wounded though in this example. All right, so for your flag phase, what you do is you look at the season, you're in season one, you see who has the highest gold and hasn't had their um, castle sieged, right? They haven't fallen to the siege, right? In this case, purple has the higher gold, but they have been sieged. Let's say, and actually how this was set up, red would be fine. Red has second highest, but they stayed alive. So they would get this flag, which gives them one point at the end of the game. Now, if purple had still been intact by the end, purple would have gotten this because they have the highest points. So first you look at the highest points and then you see whose city has been sieged or not sieged. Now, if there's a tie, and this is what confused me and you'll find out later, there's a whole bunch of these little ones in there. If there is a tie at any point on who gets one of these flags, both people get one. Doesn't matter if it's a tie for um, season seven, both players that are tied get one. All right, that's the flag phase, passing out flags based on who has the most gold and hasn't been sieged. Their castle hasn't been sieged. After that, you go ahead and you do the income phase. How the income phase works is you get one gold for each piece of your castle still standing. So let's say this castle had two turrets up, 
they were doing dandy. I can't get this one to hook right there. They were doing dandy. They would get one, two, three, four, five, six. They would get six gold. And so what they would do is they'd move up six on the gold track to 12, right? Let's say this person over here, they haven't put turrets up, but they've survived. They'd get one, two, three, four gold. So they would move up four on their gold track. All right. Based on the gold track is you set up your um, positions here in your place order. Now, let's, for example, say that something like this happened, right? We had a turn of fate. I guess we can go back to where we were like this. There is a turn of fate. So when we went to gather gold, purple, who started at, um, they were second. So they started at six. Right here, purple would get three. One, two, three. Red would get four. So they'd get one, two, three, four. Now they're tied, right? They're right here. So from where your gold is, you set up your player order. Now, let's say that um, purple had gotten a little bit further. So in that sense, red would still be first. You look at the lower number, they become the first, and then the next lower and so on and so forth. The highest number becomes the last player in turn order. Now, if these rules were switched, when we went to do this, these would get switched like that. So purple would now become first, red would be second. Now, if they both are tied, your order stays the same. So the people that are tied keep whatever order they already have on the player order track. All right. So once that is done, then we move on to harvest and feed. So in this part in harvest and feed, first you harvest. Oh, you get rid of this token too. First you harvest. So you go ahead and you get uh, one food for each field that isn't raised. And remember raised means that they have that fire on there. So in this case, there would be four. So you would have one, two, three, four. And then over there, they would only get three because one of their fields is raised. So their field is on fire. So they would get three. All right. Then you have to feed. You have to feed your soldiers, soldiers that you have, all your soldiers on the wall, in the city, in the infirmary. So in this case, they would have to spend two to feed their soldiers. They would over here have to spend two. If you do not have, have enough food to feed your soldiers, you have to use gold. One gold per every soldier you need to feed. Soldiers have to be fed no matter what. And remember, mercenaries at the end get taken off the board. If there are mercenaries out here, at the end of the whole battle thing, you don't have to feed them. They just walk away. Burp, 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 right? To come back out and fight another day. Now, the next thing you do is you replenish the board. So you go ahead and take the invader cards and discard them. You just face up at the bottom of the stack. You discard these cards over here, bottom of the stack. Now, how it works down here is you see where the X is down here. It's telling you to get rid of that card, right? Oh, let's, let's stop at that because I'm trying to follow the book to make sure it does the right order. All right. So first you get rid of these, all right? You clean up the ones that are out. Then you go ahead for the invader, you put one face up, keeping the orientation. And then you go ahead and you look at where season you're gonna go into, right? So on here, we have the season tracker. The next season, we're in season one, we know we're going into season two. So as you see on here, it tells you where or how many face down invader cards you put down. We have our one face up further left for furthest left spot. And we're going into season two. So we go ahead and put one face down, keeping the orientation. All right. So then you go ahead and take a siege card and you do the same thing. Bloop. Plop it down right there. Bloop, 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 bloop. All right, then after that, you wanna go ahead and move your threat marker up. So now everyone is constantly at three, even if they're below. Then you deal with the buildings and the um, refugees. And how you do that is 
This X in the square, you get rid of that card, put it face up at the bottom of the deck, shift to the right, and set out a new card face up. So in this sense, or this case, this sense, you would get this, put it at the bottom, shift these over, bloop, bloop, and put a new one face up. Bam! And we're fresh and ready to go right there. All right, once that is done, everyone collects up all their workers. So at this point, your workers would have been out, right, all over the place doing their thing. All right. So you would go ahead and you collect up all your workers and you put them back in your great hall. This guy's, two of them are drunk. They're sitting around upside down. All right. So you also return um, any protection tokens from your farm. Oh, I keep doing that early. So this would still be out there. If there's a protection token, you go ahead and return that. You set all that up so it's ready. If you get a used village worker, right? You get this used village worker when your city sieged, right? You would have them, if they were out on the board here and you'd use them, you'd get rid of them. So how it works if you get sieged, what happens is, in this case, they would have no people. If this person was sieged in the battle, they would end up getting one of these guys, right? They go out right there and they would get two mercenaries and these two mercenaries don't leave. They go in the middle of the city and they don't leave at the end of the season. They're there to use in the next season. So the other thing you do when you get sieged is if you look on here, there's a little red circle. So say, well, purple and this was sieged, they would drop all the way down to five. So that red circle tells you what gold marker to go to. So five, five, six, seven. So it'll always tell you where you're dropping down to next. All right. Then you get your gray worker for the next season and you get yourself two happy mercenaries. Is this one of the mercenaries that got stepped on? I stepped on a mercenary or a soldier the other day. Sad, sad. These are fairly sturdy for being so small. Anyways, so get siege, you get an extra worker, you get two mercenaries for the next season and you move your gold tracker down to a space marked in red next to it. So in this case, it would be five. All right, so now the next thing that you wanna go ahead and do is you want to advance the uh, marker, like I said. So this advances to two. Let's say someone already got that point. That advances to two. When this marker advances right at the end of everything before you start a new round, when it advances here, you get uh, one more worker each. When it advances to six, you get one more worker each. All right. Now, once you hit the um, seventh uh, season, once you get all the way down to seven, season seven, all these would be gone. Workers would obviously be gone, so on and so forth. Once you get to the end, so you prepare, they attack, you figure out what happens, then you're at the end. Once you're at the seventh, you wouldn't bump this up anymore. You go, I'm at seven. Now it's time to count and see who has the most money. Now, how you make money is first you look at, well, this is your track that's gonna count your money. So wherever you're starting at, gold you have left, that's where you start. You look at building cards and you would go ahead and like I said, you would look up in this corner. So there's a two, right? That would move, if red had that one, it'd move red up two. Right? Then you have refugees, some have zero, and some actually do have points. Oh, there's the one we put underneath. Some have one point, right? You would advance that much. So first you have where you're at, then you do your buildings, you do your refugees. After you do the refugees, you count your flag tokens and move yourself up based on those flag tokens. Once the flag tokens are done, you go off all the secret objectives that you have um, hit, right? Um, lead humbly. You might have to look up what lead humbly means. Do you just lead? Um, oh, least flags, it tells you at the bottom. So you would get two points if you hit this objective, right? If you have multiple objectives, you get points for all those objectives. Now, once that's done, you see who has the most points, whoever has the most points wins. And then what you do is if there's a tie in points, it's whoever has the most flags breaks the tie. 
And that there is how you play um, After the Empire, right? So this is a Gray Fox, Gray Fox game, games, Gray Fox games, I just blinked on it. After the Empire, Gray Fox games. So this is how you play through this. The one thing I will say, it's not in the rules, I kind of started scanning and I couldn't find anything so far, is if a player lands here and they get a card, does this instantly refill? Now my verdict after reading over and over again is it doesn't refill until the end of the season where you restock everything. So I would argue two places to go here, you can get two cards. Two places to go here, you get a choice of three cards and that's it until they restock with the season. So that's it. I hope you guys like this how to play. I'm Steven with Cardboard Coalition. Help us grow the coalition by liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting the bell notification, all those YouTube things. If you think I missed something, yell at me in the comments or just say hi and tell me what I missed. Um, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.